Bigger brands out there will either stick to taking all of their own photos or purchasing photos from sites like Shutterstock and Adobe Stock, which are high-end professional photos that are very specific. So what I mean by that is if your client is looking for something like an image of a woman that's being haunted by the ghost of hamburgers past or two crash test dummies engaging in public displays of affection, they will definitely have to purchase these because they're so ridiculously specific, you would never find these things for free. But I found that most of the time, people are just looking for a nice background image for a quote graphic or something to use in their blog posts or on social media, in which case, really some of the free websites that we're gonna be discussing here might totally suffice, but it does depend on your client or on your own personal preference. So one of my favorite resources for this is unsplash.com. They have so many amazing, high quality, giant images from expert photographers that you can use. And they're getting a lot better over the years. They've gotten a lot better with their actual search engine. So it used to be quite minimal, but because they have so many images now, you can usually get a lot of what you're looking for. So you can use some of their own categories or you can use this to sort of type in a specific keyword that you're looking for. It'll have the individual photos, some collections that also match this keyword, which, if, which can be great if you're looking for a series of photos for something, or you can just scroll, keep on scrolling down and you'll also be able to click into any individual image and down at the bottom, you'll find related photos. So this can be really great to just kind of keep going down this rabbit hole of inspiration for what you're looking for. And of course, then you can like it if you're logged in to make sort of a collection of photos that you've liked, or you can add it to a collection of your own. And then you can also download it or choose from the drop down of how big you actually want the photo to be that you're downloading. So this is important because the original size photos are gigantic and they'll take up a lot of room on your computer if you are continuously downloading them in their original size. So if you're only wanting this to be used for like an Instagram graphic, you will just need the medium because an Instagram graphic will only ever be 1080 pixels wide. So you don't need it to be this giant and you're going to save a lot of space on your computer as a result of that. But I would also encourage you to actually use these to kind of like them or add these to a collection. So I've just got kind of a sample collection here, which is a teal and orange collection. So that kind of fits with what this is, or I could create a new collection, but you'll notice it's got a lock there. So it's private to me. It's just because if I was doing this for clients and maybe gathering a couple of photos that I think might be suitable, I could actually link them to it and say, these are the photos I'm thinking of for this new blog post that you're looking to create. What do you think before going? ahead and downloading everything going through the whole process so you do have to be logged in for that make sure that you are creating your free account if you want to utilize that and at any point you can then go in here and view your profile and then my likes are here so that's a bit messy because obviously I've just liked it but there could be hundreds and hundreds of photos in there or your collections will be over here. So that makes it really easy and clean and organized. And if at any point you're doubting the license as well, because I know this is a concern for some of you guys, just jump on over to the three dots and go to license and you'll find out you can actually do anything with your Unsplash photos except for selling them because obviously they're providing them for free so they don't want you selling them and making a profit and they also don't want you putting them on a competitive website. So if you are going to start up your own website, giving people free images, you can't pull them from Unsplash and sell them there. And it will always tell you that attribution is not required, but it's appreciated because of course the photographers are putting their images on these websites to get exposure. So if you can ever give them a bit of attribution, then that's a great thing. And sometimes you can do this in blog posts. It's a lot harder to do on social media. So the other website that I really like is Kaboom Pics. Kaboom Pics is uh, great for collections of photos. So if you've got a photo that you really like, it will usually give you a couple of things. It will give you the same thing as Unsplash in terms of being able to download it in different dimensions, but it will also give you a collection that is from the same photo shoot. So this can be really good for creating like a slideshow or a carousel on social media where you actually just want the same image from different sides, but you want it to have that continuous flow. So Kaboom Pics can be really, really great for that. And also it gives you color palettes, which 
it's a bit of a useless feature most of the time, but sometimes it can be really great, especially if you're still in that beginning process of trying to experiment with color palettes. You can find images that you like and it'll already give you your hex codes there. So that is a benefit of Kaboom Picks, but just be aware of the fact that while they are completely free for you to use, uh, they're really limited, I find, with their search engine capabilities at this stage. So putting in a word like success, uh, these are all premium images by iStock. So these don't actually exist on Kaboom Picks. So it basically is saying it can't come up with any images that are related to that keyword. But if you put in something like uh, minimalist, you'll find lots and lots and lots. So it just has to be the right keyword for Kaboom Picks because their images are just not as search engine optimized as they are on Unsplash and other sites. But the other benefit of it is if you're trying to cre keep a really consistent feed on your Instagram account, you can come in here and say, I only wanna look at red images. And you don't even have to put in any particular keywords if you don't want to. Uh, but yeah, you can just look for images that match the color red. Of course, it's going to give you images with any red in them. They might not be completely red images. But if you want to have some sort of a consistent color scheme and you can also flip these. So if you were looking particularly for a vertical image or a horizontal image, there is a little bit of capability. I do find their images beautiful and I find it really helpful for gathering multitude of images from the same photo shoot because I haven't seen that capability in other platforms, but just be aware that it is a little bit limited in terms of search capabilities. And then I wanna take you over to Pixabay. So Pixabay is probably the closest you're gonna to get to Google Images because they have lots and lots, like millions and millions of assets. And they not only have images, but they also have videos, music, illustration, and vector graphics as well. So now we're getting into a little bit more of an elaborate field here. If I was gonna put in, again, let's put in success. Now it's looking for videos, but I can also uh, just jump over here and say, uh, I actually just wanna look for images and it's gonna give me their results. Now keep in mind that the one downside with Pixabay is that I find them to be very stock imagey. So a lot of the time they'll be super cheesy, like these coins and plants growing out of them, which is just not right for a lot of people, a lot of clients. But there is a lot of benefit to this because you can look at vector graphics and illustrations, which is super handy if you're putting together presentations or anything like that and you can't find what you're looking for within Canva. So keep Pixabay as an option and especially for their videos and their music. But once again, I'm going to give you a bit of a better resource for videos because uh, I, again, just think that their videos on Pixabay are a little bit too stocky a lot of the time. It's like really weird things that you wouldn't necessarily uh, put inside of an, like, what is this, you know, businessman with carrot? I just, I, I can't imagine ever using that for anything. But if your clients or your business does, then great. This is a really great option for that. But if you're just looking for some, you know, really nice, almost artsy videos, then pexels.com is a really, really great resource for that. So if you put in the word success, so I would say Pixabay is really great for images. And then I'd say Pexels for videos, even though it does say it's got more photos than videos related to this key term, but that's still 2000 videos that are related to this, which is huge because they're completely free for you to use. And again, you can explore their license and their terms and conditions if you're not feeling comfortable before using them. But I can promise you that they're totally free for you to use inside of things like your YouTube videos and Facebook ads and everything else, which is so awesome. And then you can click into a particular video and once again, down here, you've got similar videos, but these are actually really, really similar. And a lot of the time they're by the same person with the same models. And it makes it really easy for you to get a really nice continuous flow using a variety of clips from the same shoot by the same creator. So if you were to go and download this, once again, you've got some options in terms of dimensions, but a lot of the time with videos, I will just 
download it as the original because I never really know what I'm going to be using it for. And then it'll basically say you can use it for whatever, but you can show your appreciation by crediting them or donating to the creator, etc. And it's also prompting me to say I can join Pexels for free so that I can have my download history. Now, <laughs> you can start to probably see as we're going through this that it can get messy very, very quickly, especially if you're, you know, a social media manager or you're doing this for multiple clients every single day of your life you will really get buried in free assets so it's really important for you to have some sort of structure in this and my preferred way of doing it is to actually just create a folder on your computer or a google drive folder that specifically is dedicated to these assets so that you know three years from now that if you pulled something from pexels or unsplash these are assets that are completely free for you to use as many times as you like and then you don't accidentally confuse them with any other images that might have stricter licenses or copyrights in place because your clients might give you assets that they've purchased that are perfectly fine for you to use for their brand, but they're not licensed to be used for your other clients because your client one purchased them so you can't use them for anyone else so you need to get really really organized and just make sure that you're keeping tab of which assets are totally free for you to use and which ones are not now canva do also have a pretty great collection of their own photos and videos and free elements that you can use directly within canva as well and we will be going into that in a little bit but i just wanted you to keep across these assets because I find Canva search engine to still be a little bit limited. So these other resources are really great to have on hand when you're designing something. So you have something to pull from in addition to what you find inside of Canva. And next we're going to go and take a look at where to find fonts and how to find good font pairings for your brand or for your client's brands all in the next lesson. So I will see you there.